السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين My beloved brothers, my colleagues I am very very fortunate and happy to be here for this 8th National Imams Refresher course that is taking place here in this beautiful center in Harare in Zimbabwe. Many of you are known to me. I see many faces that I recognize, mashallah. Few are my colleagues, few are my students. More importantly, we are all brothers. Today I want to remind myself, more than anyone else, being an imam as well, of the most important factors regarding how to deal with the congregations and the communities of today. We take cue from none other than Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. No matter how much the world will change and evolve, the sunnah of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam does not change. The first thing we have been taught by him is something known as al-ikhlas fil amal. When we work, we work for Allah. When we do something, we do it for the pleasure of Allah. Wallahi, my beloved brothers, when you do for the sake of Allah, the little that you get in return is multiplied in barakah and blessings. You may not have so much of money, people think you are rich. Because you give, because you help. Because you go out, because you are always there. So Allah gives you blessings in your children, in your family members. Allah Almighty protects you from harm that you may not know. Perhaps you have better health than others, but that is barakah. Whereas there are others who earn much more than you and I, but much of their wealth is wasted in things and there is no barakah or blessings in that wealth. So to do things for the sake of Allah, people will fault you. They will doubt you. They will say things about you. Remember, you are not doing it for them. I do good not because I think you deserve my good, but I know Allah loves those who do good. That's why I am doing good. So whether you like me or you don't like me, as long as I did good, Allah loves me. I don't care about your love or not. Subhanallah. That is an imam. You will lead salah. They will still make noise about you. It's natural. You will not be paid much. The imams are hardly paid. Today I was looking at some of the chat groups that I am on and I removed myself from most of them because of time. And people were complaining about how low imams are paid. And in my mind I am thinking, Allah blesses you with barakah. Then when the imam tries to have a side tuck shop, they say, this man is now turning towards the dunya, you see. But the dunya is halal for them, not for us. <laughs> Don't let your job that is on, on, on the side take the main center stage. But it is not prohibited to earn a living for you and for me. For as long as it is not affecting the primary work. Another factor... You find people will always complain. This imam is like that, he is like that. If you are in communities that are wealthier, perhaps they might want to control you totally, completely and totally. Reading too slow, reading too fast, doing this, doing that. All of that is for Allah to test your ikhlas. وَلَقَدْ فَتَنَّ الَّذِينَ مِن قَبْلِهِمْ we have tested all those before you in order to distinguish who is truthful and who is lying. You love Allah, you are working for Allah. You are an imam in the masjid. Allah says, hang on. For you is Jannah and the Akhirah. As for the dunya, it is not necessarily for you. If we want, we can throw it at your feet. But... It will also come with challenges, with tests, with so much more. But that is Allah. He's going to test you and I. Then in the Akhirah, how will we earn Jannatul Firdaus? 
only by the mercy of Allah. When you do for Allah, my brothers, let me explain something to you. When you do something for Allah, it is important to love those around you because even if they don't like you, you will not have an impact on people if you don't care for them and love them, no matter how much they have hurt you. I take cue from my own father, Sheikh Musa. You know him. No matter how much they attacked him, no matter what they said about him, you might know examples. No matter how evil they were, he tried to help, he continued to assist, he continued to well wish. He, that's why there is success. Otherwise, a leader cannot have hatred in his heart for people whom, Wallahi, the Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Allahumma hdi qawmi fa innahum la ya'lamun. Allah, they don't know. If they knew, they would not do what they are doing here. They don't know. These are my children. These are my people. This is the ummah I'm trying to call. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he was asked in ta'if to say whatever he wants and the angels would execute, you know what he said? Allahumma inni ashku ilayka da'fa quwwati. Oh Allah, I complain to you my weakness. You ask me to deliver the message I'm delivering, they are not listening. Subhanallah rabbil alameen. How many of us, if people don't listen, we, we complain about ourselves. I'm weak. But it's from Allah. Continue to work for Allah. One day they will understand. One day they will come. I also face many challenges as I work. But for every one, there are another hundred or a thousand who will benefit. Don't worry. You don't do it for the people. They will judge you because the world is full of judging. You continue to work. Think, how can I get the message to everyone? I came here on my own. I put up this tripod in front of me. I have my own phone, which I put up here. I rigged up my own recording. I am recording this myself. And I have a channel which I started to use some years ago. Put it up on my own. And people think you have a thousand people working for you doing things. And they don't realize we are Zimbabweans <laughs> to begin with. Allah will grant it its acceptance if it is meant. And Allah will throw you out if he wants. It's not them. It's Allah. So use the platforms. There is so much you can use. You might sit here in this country and reach people in Australia and wherever else because today Allah brought it to you. I remember there was a time when I used to sometimes hear people say, no, you know, there is always politics between some organizations and some masjids. That is not for us. For you and me, we don't want to believe in the politics. They are all our brothers. We will help everyone, no matter who they are. For as long as they are Muslimin, shahada, Allah, ilaha illallah, wa anna Muhammad rasulullah, you need to be above the difference. They are your brothers. You will reach them because the idea, if you don't have a good rapport with them, how will you get the message of the deen to them and their children? How? So never mind the politics. They say this one is like this, that one is like that. Just keep smiling and walking. Just do your work. It's okay. It's okay. Salamu alaikum. How are you? Everything okay? Mashallah. How are your children? How is the family? If there is any way I can help you, please let me know. Sometimes there is something you can assist. You can go and help. Why not? They will be stunned. One day they will come. So recently I faced, we faced many challenges. Recently there was another one. People created a huge thing out of something minor. And so what happened is, someone decided to swear me in public. Swear me. In person. I was just walking and they started to say things. I just smiled because with me was a very important people. And I just smiled and I carried on. Because you know what? My brother, I work for Allah, not for you. That's it. Another thing is, you know, my bread is not buttered neither by you nor by anyone. <laughs> That's another thing. So well, no matter what you say, it goes to show who you are, not me. Next day, I had an opportunity to meet the same man again. I, I grabbed his hand. Salamu alaikum. How are you? I said, you know what? May Allah grant you goodness. I want to tell you 10 years from today, you will regret what you did. That's all I want to say. You know why? All of us, when we are young, we have energy. We, we don't want to accommodate. It's me and I want to do this and that. As you grow older, you realize it's not just me. I have children. They need to get married. 
I have people, I have a community, I need to serve the community. I have so much happening, and things need to come. I am not, we are together. We were, if there are struggles, we struggle together. If there is some goodness, we are enjoying Eid and whatever it is together. We are a people, when something is being distributed, they will remember us. I'm giving you a Zimbabwean example. Because you know how the struggles have been on for decades right now for us. And mashallah, look at us. Some of, some of us, mashallah, we are struggling more than others, right or wrong. But we sit together and alhamdulillah, we try our best. No one knows. We pray for each other. So I told the brother, 10 years from today, you will regret what you have said. And long discussion. And I guarantee you, by the will of Allah, if Allah wants goodness, Allah always softens the hearts of the people. خَيْرٌ nasi and فَعُهُمْ nasi. The best of the people are those who are the most beneficial to the rest of the people. Help people. When we become selfish, we won't reach anywhere. Look at others and tell yourself, what can I give this person? I can give them something. Maybe dua at least. And you know what? I learned something. When Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam speaks about character. And when Aisha radiallahu anha says, كَانَ خُلُوقُهُ Quran. He was, his akhlaq is an embodiment of the Qur'an. Wallahi, that makes a huge difference in da'wah and in your teaching and as an imam. When your character is beautiful, when you talk to the people with respect, you automatically have your own respect. Your own respect. But when you don't respect people, you as an imam, you can joke and laugh, but with the right people. And there must be a limit to your jokes. They should not become X-rated and XX-rated. Even though you might just be sitting with young boys and you think, ah, we are just joking. They will lose respect for you. Behind the scenes, they will lose respect. Make yourself, yes, we can laugh, but there is a limit to the laughter. Make yourself, yes, we can spend time, we can laugh and joke, but there is a limit to those jokes. Your character must outshine everyone. Speak with respect and clearly to everyone. Go and be there and help and assist wherever possible, wherever needed, depending on where you are based, how many imams there are, what is the job exactly, and we need to do more than that. Why not? So, you know, as we progress in life, we will face challenge upon challenge because Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was imam of imams. He was the leader of all. He was Sayyidul Anbiya, the leader of Anbiya. Look at the challenges he went through. They accused him. They said bad things about him. They tried hard. What happened? After he passed on and things started to spread. Today we are billions on earth following a man who didn't even have the a sound speaker that we had here, but his voice reached further than anything that I could allow mine to reach, then mine could or yours. People follow and they will follow. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, to be able to assist and to help is very interesting. To develop your character will empower you. People want to listen to you. Have a good expression on your face. I always like to smile. The reason is, it's a sunnah. Another reason is, when you have a pleasant look about yourself, People will automatically want to listen to you. Imagine someone comes up in Jumu'ah and they are just frowning. And they say, Inna alhamdulillah, nahmaduhu. People will want to go away. What is this brother going to say? And then some people, they scream at you, they shout at you. Yes, there are times when you need to raise your voice, by all means. There are times when you need to use words that are a little bit hard. But those are times. I like to draw cue from Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He sent Abu Musa al-Ash'ari and Mu'ad ibn, Yaman, ibn Jabal to where? To Yemen. And he told them, Bashira wala tunafira. Give good news to the people. Don't chase them away from the deed. Good news. What is good news? Allah is merciful. Allah is great. Allah will forgive your shortcomings. Turn to Allah. Allah is Ra'uf, Allah is Rahim. Here is the deen. Allah will grant you Jannah when you do this, when you do that. You don't start off by saying something which will chase them away. There was a brother who wanted to accept Islam. So he said, can I accept Islam? They said, yes. He accepted Islam. They told him, you need to cut. You need to cut what? You need to cut what? Circumcision. They said, you must slot. He was scared. He said, no, I can't. They said, no, you have to. We put you. You come. 
We, we need to, you must, seven days. Where did they get this from that seven days you need to slice? So the brother says, hey, that's rough. I can't do it. I'm old man. What's going to happen? He was scared. You know how scared they get? That is his pride. They want to chop it. So he said, no, 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 no. It's very hard. They said, no, we, you have to. We will take you by force. He said, no, then I want to leave Islam. He said, they said, if you leave, we will chop your head. Never mind that. So he was, ah, what kind of religion is this? I enter, you want to chop. I exit, you want to chop. What, do you want? what is it? That shows people are confused. You see, people are what? They are confused. May Allah Almighty make it easy. Yes, circumcision is important in Islam. But how can you start with this point to say, hey, Bashira, wala tunafira. Come on, take it easy. Speak, do things in a nice way. Wahid, wahid, you know, one, one, let's move. And the brother is scared, he wants to go out, there's a bigger problem. <laughs> so, then the Prophet ﷺ says, Yassira, wala tu'assira, make things easy for people, don't make them hard. Today, many ulama are failing because they make things hard and not easy. There is a hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu ma khuyira bayna amrayni illa khtara aysarahuma ma lam yakun ithman. Have you heard that hadith? Whenever the Prophet ﷺ was faced with two ways of doing something, he always chose the easier one for as long as it was not sinful. I try and tell that to some of the people. They will say, what are you doing? Say, but it's the sunnah. Yeah, there are two ways of doing it. I can go walking or I can go by, ro by, by car. So let me go by car because as a sunnah, I'm practicing go doing the easier of the two. That's just one example. But so many other examples. Make life easy for people, not difficult. You don't give them the most difficult ruling ever to say, no, that's it. And you enjoy, people enjoy it because you know what is the problem today? Let me explain also. When people lose ikhlas, they start fighting for turf. What does turf mean? They want followers. They want control. They want more numbers. But numbers are from Allah. You do the work. Do the work, do the work. Allah will see it. The messenger and the believers. You do the work, it will be seen. But when you start saying, I'm the one, he's not the one, that's a problem. Look, I give you my own example. And this again, taught by our own ustads. Do the work, do not turn towards others. You remind people of halal and haram, of what is good, of correct aqidah, of all goodness. But you don't have to name other people and say, ah, that man, he's like this and like that. You, don't, you shouldn't have the time to do that. You shouldn't have the time. Here, how many are we? We are more than 300 imams here, right? I tell you, my beloved brothers, if we were to talk about one another, we would have nothing more to talk about. It's enough for us in this room to talk about one another. That guy is like this. This one is like that. That one is after woman. This one is after, ma after money. That one, he just reads too loud. That one thinks he's too knowledgeable. This one thinks he... And wallahi, what happened? Shaitan will succeed. Shaitan will achieve. Nothing more. So don't turn away from your focus of your work by talking about others. Prop them up. If there is any goodness, call someone. Come to our masjid. Come give a good talk when you know he's a good speaker. For example... Or when you find one imam of another masjid is in your masjid, for example, and he might be uh, doing salah, he passing through that place or whatever it is, you might want to introduce him to your congregation because tomorrow they might benefit from him. Don't be scared. Ah, they might control tomorrow these people will come or this imam will come and take over my job. No, who do you work for? Allah, Allah, that's it. You know, all of us here, we are working for the same company. What is that company? It's the deen. Who is the boss and the owner? Allah. So your boss and my boss is the same. The company is the same. If there are more branches of the same company, should we be upset or happy? When you see a chicken inn, for example, when there are 20 branches and there is a 21st branch, they all announce there's another branch opening on that street. Right or wrong? They are happy. There's a manager there. They support each other because they are working for the same company. It's just an example. We are working for Allah. Don't, don't hate on others. Otherwise you will fail. So the community also is facing many, many, many challenges. Don't make people feel like they are not Muslim because they go further from Islam. 
Let them feel we are Muslim and we all need to improve. Include yourself in it. When I started the speech, I said, this reminder is for who? For me. Jazakumullah khair. Why? Because I want to include myself. It's a reminder for me. How can I just come and say, right, you, you know what is your... Wait, we have an issue. It's the ummah we are facing. So my brothers, let me explain. If you are to speak to people and address them, letting them feel they are Muslim and they need to work hard on some of their bad habits. I'm talking of the ummah who comes to your masjid, right? I'm not talking about da'wah outside. It's another topic, but there also there are different principles. You bring people in, they will be happy. I'm already a Muslim. Let me try more. Let me try harder with my dress, with my salah, with my this. Let me stop to do whatever haram. Let me increase ibadah because you are encouraging them. You are propping them. You are informing them of the reward they will have. You are informing them of so much goodness that is to follow. So they feel encouraged because why? On the globe today, they are suffering everywhere. I have traveled to more than so many countries. Trust me, every country has its challenges. Every country has its challenges. Every country has its what? Its challenges. So don't think that I'm going to go there, so it's going to be easier for me. No, there, there will be a different type of challenge there. Subhanallah. Different type of challenge. So my beloved brothers, when we make people feel that they are not acceptable, you know you, you are gone to Jahannam, halas, it's over. <laughs> In order to say that, you, you have to be in Jahannam first. Because who saw that that person was there? You saw it, isn't it? So where were you? You were there. You, see. So you need to be careful how you speak. You cannot just doom people, you are in Jahannam for what? Yes, we warn people at a stage, look, there is Jahannam, there is punishment. We save ourselves from this, in this way, speak in a nice way. And then what will happen? Allah Almighty will grant goodness. To the entire community, there is a feeling. People want to come. They will come instead of just one salah, they will be there for two and three. And we, they feel good. In the masjid, the environment must be very welcoming. Very welcoming. Do not favor the rich only. Some people, the wealthy, they, they greet them nice. And the poor and those others, they just, ah, by the way, Wallahi, give more importance to those who are poor. The Prophet wasallam, he used to ask Allah, Allahumma inni as'aluka hubb al masakin. Do you know what that means? Oh Allah, I ask you, Hubb al Masakin. I ask you the love of those who are miskin, Masakin. So we need to ask Allah, love of Masakin. How do you get it? Go out, talk to them, help them, reach them, talk, greet them, etc. Sit with them, listen to what their issues are, try to be there for them. Wallahi, your heart will improve and so will mine. So, my beloved brothers, the deen of Allah, at this moment we have social media. I think it is the challenge of the age. It has a very good side to it. And it also has a very challenging side to it. You see. So what is the solution? When people see social media, they see good things and bad things. Which is more? Which is more? Bad things. You are the one saying it, not me. Huh? <laughs> How to combat that? By increasing good. How are you going to increase good? By being there to do more good. Some people say, no, don't have this, shy away. If you cannot control yourself, switch it off. Some people, they can't control themselves. Sitting all night, flicking, looking at all the women and everything else. And when the wife says, what are you doing? I'm doing dawah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what dawah are you doing, chef? <laughs> you are an imam. What dawah are you doing? <laughs> you need to make sure that we are doing a good thing. One lie. If you scroll on social media and you only see that which is wrong, you as a leader need to tell yourself, I can change this by the help of Allah. How? We will put things that are good. We will learn. Imagine we are 300 plus in this room. If each one of us does one clip a day, how many is that going to be in 10 days? 3,000. How many will it be in one year? How many? Subhanallah. You see. So Allah Almighty will grant us. Allah Almighty will grant it acceptance. You just need to sow the seed. The rest of it happens from Allah. When you want a mango tree, you sow the seed. What do you do? You put water and whatever. How is it going to grow? Allah knows, but it will grow. After some time, you start seeing. Maybe after you leave, you will find the fruits of it. Work hard, be dedicated. And I tell you another one. 
When Allah has given you a place to stay, some food and drink, and a little bit of that which is enough for you to survive, you might not have too much extra. Work hard there. It's a good job. Work hard there. And you know what? Allah will open more doors at some point. Difficulty today, we run away, go somewhere. Ah, it's more difficult. But we are too shy to, to acknowledge that we made a mistake. It's more hard here now. Then we run away from there. Then we go even further. In English, they say jumping from the frying pan into the fire. fire. That's what's happening. My brother, there was a frying pan. We were jumping a little bit with oil. Now we are in the fire. Subhanallah. May Allah grant us goodness. May Allah bless us. Things are tough. Across the globe, people are facing challenges. When we address them, we need to bear in mind what they are going through. Some people, they might not appear to be so, they might not appear to be so practicing, but if you look at them, their life is improving, coming closer to Allah. What are you supposed to do? You're supposed to help and assist. It brings me to another very interesting point. Many people are entering the fold of Islam. Follow up with them. Teach them. Follow up with them. Because if you don't follow up with them, they will dilly-dally. And they won't have no enough knowledge to remain. But they know it's the true deen. They want to pray. Salah and the meanings of what you are reading in Salah needs to be taught from the first day. What is the meaning of Allahu Akbar? When, when we were young, they didn't teach us much of the meaning. Just for Salah, you say Allahu Akbar and you start Subhanak Allahumma bihamdika wa tabarak asmuk and then you start with Surah Fatiha, Basmala and whatever else. And some people didn't know what it means. They just do it and they are wondering, what is this Salah? Wallahi, more important than anything is to know the meaning of it. Teach them the meaning. Get into it. See, it will change their lives and yours. When you are saying Allah is the greatest, the one who made me is the greatest, subhanallah. Then you are asking Allah, praising Him, asking Him for guidance in Surah Fatiha, then continuing through some other short surahs, then go to Rukur. What are you saying? So to follow up with those who have accepted Islam is very important and do it slowly, bit by bit by bit. They won't know everything in one day. So take it easy. They might not be able to practice everything in one day, but slowly but surely they will come. So inshallah, these are some of the issues that I managed to raise in my half an hour. But Sheikh, I still have two and a half minutes. So inshallah, we will uh, fill every minute of that, every second of it, we will fill it inshallah. Because I'm seeing such beautiful faces here, beloved brothers of mine. It's not uh, easy to just let go of them. Some of the brothers, mashallah, the beards have grown from the last time I've seen you. It's a good sign, <laughs> mashallah. May Allah Almighty bless us. Learn to love one another. Learn to care for one another. Even those who don't like you. Even those who spread false about you. Look, I give you one quick example. And I'm going to give you an example. I, I am not so much involved now. But at the end of the day, we are all part of the, the organization. Many years back, I recall some people whom I knew. They used to say very bad things. Majlis like this. These ones are like that. This one's like that. You know what? The train continued without them. It's like a train station. Remember this. And the train is moving. And if you are going to say this train is very bad, that train is bad. It stopped for five minutes to pick up passengers. You are saying, ah, that train, that train. You know what? You are left at the station and there's no one around you and the train is gone with everybody. It's gone. So <laughs> the best thing to do, jump on the train at least. And inshallah you will move. You will move more and more. I remember the, in, back in another country, there was a brother who said, you know, that, that, uh, that uh, uh, masjid, I will not support them. You know, Allah created others to support the masjid because the masjid is whose house? <laughs> then that man was sitting and saying, ah, now what? Now what? You, Allah put you out and used others. The work of Allah is not going to stop because of the statement of one person. It's not going to stop. Good work will increase even if five people talk against it. But the moral of the story, let us, us, not be those who talk, 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 talk. Don't talk. Do the work and show what you are doing. Allah will see it. The people will benefit. And in that way, we will serve the ummah correctly. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness.